Hi, and it's Bob from Lapbook, and I'm here at the new permanent Crimson Moon with Ian Sewell. Hi, Ian, it's good to be with you at the new Crimson Moon. Oh, it's wonderful to have the Lab Book with us. We're our <laughs> grand opening. <laughs> yes, thank you. And it was actually it was a grand opening as well. Mm -hmm. But for those who perhaps may not be familiar, could you give us an idea of where the Crimson Moon came from and how it got here? Right, well. 2004, a long, long time ago. 18 years ago. Curious pastimes. Yeah. And um, there used to be a bar there, the Jerrick Bar. And yeah. uh, we were approached by the company at that time and asked whether uh, we'd be interested in running the in character bar. Mm -hmm. Which seemed like a crazy idea. I was a yeah. serving policeman at the time. Yeah. And so uh, we started off and we had this concept. We were playing in the Wolves, which is the Viking group for. Um, Curious pastimes, yeah. And uh, we had this sort of bit of a backstory about uh, the Crimson Wolves, yeah. which were one of the baddies. So uh, we caught this concept of having a Crimson Moon mm -hmm. tavern, but the main idea was that it had to be in character. We yeah. didn't want something that was a uh, beer tent, we didn't want something which plastic, it had to yeah. really look and feel. And we worked for a long time yeah. on trying to get that to feel right and I think we succeeded. Mm. 2006 I retired from the police and we yeah. went into it full time and that yeah. meant well we went to Curious Pastimes, we did factions for Lorien Trust, yeah. we did all sorts of things and then we did reenactments as well mm -hmm. and of course in reenactment um, generally they didn't have something which was an in-character tavern Yeah. and that made it something different. There were candles, there were tapestries, yeah. there were people in character behind yeah. the bar. It wasn't somebody on a minimum wage sort of pulling pints until 10 o'clock so yeah. they could go and get themselves a few drinks themselves. No, it was everybody behind the bar had a character, yeah. a reason to be there. And I think that always spilled over because people who enjoy themselves behind the bar mm -hmm. make it much better for people in front of the bar. Oh. And mm -hmm. we kept the character side of it all the way through. Well, time moves on, yeah. I had to retire. Yeah. I'm getting a bit older now. Mm -hmm. Far too old to mention. And um, so when we retired, we thought we would like to have a tavern where we are. Instead of us traveling all the way around the country, yep. putting up 120 foot of marquee, That's just Susie and myself, yep. and then serving and then jumping in the van, um, we thought if we could find somewhere, we would have a tavern of our own. Yeah. And then everybody else could come. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Spillage! Um, everyone else could come to us yeah. rather mm. than the other way around. So we found this rather nice place out of Rid Lewis, yeah. which is, to be fair, the back end of Wild West Wales. It's a yeah. long way from anywhere. It's quite quiet. Yeah. But we've got some lovely gardens here. We've got some lovely areas. There's a river going down the side. And more important, we have... there was a big workshop. Yeah. Now, it was absolutely chock-a-book full of um, old stuff. Yeah. And then I moved here and I filled it up with all of our all rubbish. All of your stuff. <laughs> but over a year, yeah. almost 18 months actually, um, we've managed to take it, I panelled it, I put everything that we felt that the Crimson Moon was when we were travelling mm. into the character of the place. Yeah. Um, it's got candles, it's got tapestries, it's got yeah. wooden side, it's got so many tankards mm -hmm. that we could never run out quite honestly. Yeah. We could serve most of Wales probably. probably. Um, and then I've got this rather nice area here which yeah. you can possibly see as we go around. It's a, we've got a beer garden. Yep. I've got a stage area over here. Perfect. We've built a patio area on the side. Um, and that's it. We just want people to come and enjoy what we've got. And uh, last yesterday, um, 12 o'clock, I spoke with you at that time. And yeah. said, I've absolutely no idea if anyone is coming. We might just have a couple of stalwarts what we had from Curious Pastimes who have yeah. taken the trouble to come all the way along here. Yeah. Um, and yourself and Stu. And uh, we um, said, we think we've got four or five people. Yeah. Well, a few hours later, I had 35 people in here all singing the green one. Oh yes, yes, um, that was a wonderful moment. Um, but, uh, you know, this is this is just local villagers and yeah. everything else, which is fine. But um, what we'd like to do is consider those people, those groups that yeah. we've worked with over the time, our 
wonderful in character people in mm -hmm. LARP. Also our reenactment friends. Yeah. I've got Viking friends and um, I think this would now provide a situation where we could do a bit of camping, yeah. a nice little yurt down the bottom for mm -hmm. those who want to be upmarket. Yeah. Um, you were sleeping in our trailer tent last night. Very and um, we've got some space that I think we'd be able to have for camping. And I think 20, 25, maybe 30 people yeah. camping over. Um, I think it would be a nice venue for a tavern weekend. Social, yeah. um, just for us all to get together again. So social weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an opportunity if you have a social weekend, probably people have weapons, probably if they have weapons, they'll start fighting each other. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt there's a necromancer somewhere in this area, which is probably going to raise up a few zombies oh, because it's, it's the sort of thing that happens. Uh, but, um, you know, you could do anything. It's not a huge place, just under three acres. Yeah. Um, but it's rather nice, I think. To no, it is, rather, it is rather beautiful, yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, and that's really what our intention is. Uh, they got rid of the pub in Rid Lewis in 1914. That's right. That's over 100 years ago. It is. It's 100, 108 years. 100 years now, so with and, no uh, pub. So um, it, there are one or two people in the town who sort of now find that if they can walk to us rather than driving um, to yeah. one of the other pubs. Um, and I think that probably showed slightly last night because yeah. there were several people who really shouldn't be anywhere near a car probably for a couple of days. <laughs> but um, of course, the other thing is we still have our mead emporium and yeah. we have our country wines. We've gone back to Lime Bay um, mm -hmm. as our main source. Yeah. And we are doing the old traditional thing we always did in the Crimson Moon, which is the wine tasting and the mead tasting. And uh, we have therefore um, Got a lot of mead virgins who have um, yeah. gone away now with a lot of enthusiasm. I saw a lot of bottles stuff. of mead walking away yesterday. Uh, well, did you? Uh, you probably had too much yourself because I think people were carrying them rather uh, than walking. Possibly, yeah. Mm. Oh, 
Well, that's that's fantastic, Ian. Well, look, thank you so much. Uh, so, so this is this is Bob with Ian at the Crimson Moon, and in the background you might have heard Fabio, the peacock. If you get a chance to come here, please do. Thank you, and thank you very much, Ian. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Sue. <laughs>